Do you know what the gift of faith is all about? It causes Clark Kent to become Superman. Tune into today's broadcast and find out how you can operate like Superman and perform a miracle. Welcome to Wisdom for Living with Greg Moore. Join with Greg as he shares truth from the Word of God that will help you grow in wisdom and successfully navigate a balanced life with family, marriage, finances, and relationships. And now, here's Greg. Welcome to today's broadcast of Wisdom for Living. My name is Greg Moore with Greg Moore Ministries. Hey, I want to encourage you to check out our website. Just go to gregmoore.com, and I've got a lot of funnies on there, wisdom quotes, a lot of you know, testimonies, things that, you know, materials, resources that I believe will be a real blessing to you. I appreciate you making this a priority in your viewing schedule, being part of the Wisdom for Living Viewing family. And, uh, man, I, it's just a blessing to uh, hear from you. Uh, you. If you've got a prayer request, uh, if you've got a testimony you could share with us, uh, just just email us, prayer at gregmore.com. Well, we're in the middle of a series called Living a Supernatural Life. And, man, I'm excited about today's broadcast because we're we're actually breaking down the meaning and application of the gifts. How are you going to be confident in operating in the gifts of the Spirit, which are given to us, by the way, to live a supernatural life? How, how are you going to do that if you don't know what they are and you don't know how to apply them? You know, abuse is, the, is a result of, of um, just being ignorant about, about what you have and you know, man, I've got a, I've got an iPhone that uh, I'm, I'm a technological immigrant, by the way, and uh, my, but my children are natives, and my grandchildren are big time natives, and you know, I, there are things in my iPhone or on my computer I don't even know that I have the ability to do, and they have to show me, and that's what I want to do today with the gifts of the Spirit is talk to you about uh, the, these gifts. I believe that'll be a, real blessing to you that there are are two gifts uh, after I share funny with you that I want to share with you specifically that most people uh, really are ignorant about that I want to inform you of what God's shown me. So let me share share funny with you. Um, This is called a vegetarian. The word for vegetarian among Indian tribes means a very bad hunter. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's funny. Brain cells die. Skin cells die. And even hair cells die. But the fat cells in my stomach, they've had to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior because they seem to have eternal life. <laughs> die, fat cells die. Praise God. So we begin to talk about the gifts of the Spirit now. This is This is actually the third uh, broadcast that we've we've talked about th- about them and there are three different categories of gifts there are the revelation gifts the word of wisdom word of knowledge discerning of spirits so there are the power gifts the gift of faith gifts of healings working of miracles and then there's the vocal gifts prophecy tongues and interpretation of tongues so and we at the end of the last broadcast, we were talking about the discerning of spirits. And, you know, I want to just finish up uh, sharing a little bit more about the discerning of spirits. The discerning of spirits is the ability to see into the spirit realm to determine what kind of spirit is influencing people. It's not a gift of suspicion. It's the supernatural ability to see into the spirit realm and recognize what spirits are operating and exercising influence in people's lives. And it's not only seeing uh, demonic spirits that are operating and de- you know people are yielding to, but it's all you, you can also see good things about people. Let, let me give you an example of that. When, uh, when Jesus uh, saw Nathaniel, under the tree, he said, Behold, an Israelite in whom is no guile. That was a discerning of spirits. He saw 
his that that man's spirit and so many times god can show you so whether somebody's even born again or not okay god can show you that so but it's not for the purpose of you to judge them or to you know try to stay away from them it's it, you know intercede for them pray for them don't give up on people just because they're in a specific uh, condition that is that is negative or that is problematic or that is troubling to you. Don't give up on them. Man, don't stop praying for people. Pray the word over them. And, and when God shows you those things, he wants you to use what he shows you in a redemptive manner, manner so that that person can change. And I've had, man, I've been in leadership now for over 40 years. And I pastored 27 years. Of have have my own ministry for a number of years. I served with Andrew Womack Ministries uh, now for several years, and and I've had, I've had the privilege of being the director of Karis Bible College uh, for five years. And when I was in that role, uh, you know, you you get all kinds of information and input from people, both both positive and negative. But but there were there have been uh, a number of instances where people would email me and they would pass judgment on Andrew's ministry and say that there's, you know, well, well, I'm so sorry to tell you that God showed me that there's a spirit of Jezebel or control over Andrew's ministry. I, I said, you guys, you're smoking bad weed. That's all I can tell you. I, I know Andrew and Jamie, and and I can tell you that the only person that's controlling Andrew and Jamie or is Jesus and their ministry. Now, that doesn't mean people, they have a large ministry and people can make different decisions than you think they should and you, you think that it's controlling and maybe even I th- think that a decision is not appropriate. But, you know, we, you, you, can, you can appeal to those people. You can, you know, I can, I can go and appeal to Andrew. And I've had people... You know, just in the na- taking a discerning of spirits, and then passing judgment on the, on the ministry instead of praying and interceding. Well, what should you do if God shows you that about a ministry or about a person? Or well, be first of all, pray. Pray. Don't just jump out there and and condemn somebody and jump in there and tell somebody, you know, this is that this is what's going to happen and there's judgment on you and all this stuff, man. Just you know, pray, intercede. Uh, don't don't look for ways to cut people off. And then it really it depends on the degree of relationship you have with that person. And if you don't have a relationship with them, uh, then you know you really don't not going to have that much access to to share. So you just pray, do what God. Yeah, but if you have access and you have a relationship with someone, well then maybe go and appeal to them and. And find out if they're teachable and open. And if they're not open and you begin to share some things with them that, you know, when they say certain things or do certain things, it seems like it's, you know, hurting other people or whatever. Well, then, you know, share that with them. But if they're not listening to you, if they're not open to you, then don't judge them. Pray for them. The discerning of spirits is not judgment, guys. It's, it's you know, use it in a redemptive way. But it also... The discerning of spirits is also like Jesus did with the Nathaniel. He he saw that person uh, as as a there was no guile in him. He could trust him. And you know when when you're when you're thinking about promoting people and you're thinking about hiring people or or if you're single and you're thinking about marrying somebody, man, you you definitely want the discerning of spirits. An operation, you you know that that person doesn't have selfish motivations. Um, I, you know, I'm thinking about what one of my sons right now. He's just, just his character is just gold. He's just impeccable. You know, I, I can you can trust him with anything. And so, you know, you 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 uh, I've, I'm thinking about another relationship I have with someone. I trust him with all the money I had and all, everything everything I have. Because I know I know I know him. He's proven himself, but also I have the discerning of spirits about him that he's he's gold. 
He's not going to hurt you. He's not going to hurt me. So this discerning of spirits is a, is a powerful gift, and it's available, but use it in a redemptive way. Then let's move to the power gifts, the gift of faith, the gifts of healings and working of miracles. Now, the gift of faith, I want to f- spend more time on that than the others because just as in the revelation gifts, the discerning of spirits has been misused and abused, the gift of faith, most people don't even know what it is. They, when they think they hear the gift of faith, they, they're, they're thinking about faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's not the gift of faith. That's faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The gift of faith is a gift of power that totally anchors the soul in God in overwhelming confidence to operate or receive gifts of healings or working of miracles. I mean, it can also operate in other areas where you just have over this, all, this overwhelming confidence that's supernatural, it's beyond yourself, and it's just like, it's almost like something all doubt. You know, you can have doubt in your, in your mind and faith in your heart, but th- when this gift operates, it's like, have you, have you ever seen the movie Superman? And you know Clark Kent going into the, into the phone booth? I'm talking about the old Superman, okay? And, and, and it's like he becomes, a, it, he becomes another person for a period of time. Okay, the movie Superman and the, and the creators of that movie, when they came up with, with that thing of Clark Kent going into the phone booth and becoming Superman, they didn't know, they didn't realize that they were actually, uh, you know, apprehending something that had to do with a, with a real gift. It's called a gift of faith. And when, the, when that gift of faith is an operation in our lives, it's exactly like the pro, almost a perfect analogy of, of your Clark Kent, just kind of normal Christian, and all of a sudden, man, you you walk in the phone booth and and you're you're Superman, but you're only Superman for a period of time, and and for for a specific purpose of time, and usually, it's to it's to bring about an instantaneous healing or miracle. Now, uh, when when you're raising when people are being raised from the dead, almost always a gift of faith works in conjunction with raising the dead. Now, I'm not saying you ha- that, you, that somebody, uh, every time somebody's raised from the dead, it's a gift of faith, but almost always the gift of faith is in operation. To, it'll, it'll raise dead people. It'll bring, it'll perform miracles. It'll, it'll do, you know, all kinds of instantaneous gift of healing. Uh, and and this is, but it's not the same as faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the by the word of God. And so, when I was in Bible school, I was uh, I, I would take time, and I would um, before before school started, and then I would pray. I would take fifteen minutes or so, thirty minutes sometimes. I'd be I'd just stay out in my car. So I wouldn't be bothered by anybody, and I just pray. And, and this one morning, uh, it was probably I think it was a uh, like January or February during the school year, and I was I was just praying, and all of a sudden, and and I couldn't remember having it just like this before, but all of a sudden, this overwhelming confidence just manifested in in my mind in my heart and it was like all doubt was just sucked out of the back of my head it was like man i was like whoa this is awesome and i'm thinking in my mind what did i do to <laughs> what did i do to earn this or 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 to walk in this because man i want to this is this is i want to walk like this all the time and so man i'm looking i'm what do i do with this cuz it's like I'm going to cast out a devil. I'm going to see somebody healed. I, something's going to happen, I know. But it, I, 
I, so I went in. I, I had went went into class, and I was sitting in the second row where I normally sat. And the guy in front of me, just a couple of seats over, was older. He was he was in his fifties, um, and and I noticed he was real kind of gray and ashen colored, and he stood up out of his seat and he just fell over and passed out on the or just fell over on the on the carpet in front of me and the instructor was there but he he wasn't right behind the podium he was off to the side and I just I just uh, I had this overwhelming sense of confidence that would that was still on me from the time of that prayer in the car and I just leapt over the table in front of me and I couldn't do that today, but I just, I mean, I seriously, because there were people on the, my left and right, I just leapt over the table, and I got down to the guy before anybody else did. His, his eyes were rolled back into his head. I mean, he, this guy was in a bad place. I, I couldn't feel a pulse or anything, but I just said, in, Je, in Jesus' name, you, you, you live. You, 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 be, you be well. And all of a sudden, he came to and and he what's happened? And somebody had already called nine one one, so the ambulance came and got him, and they took him to the hospital. And and uh, he came back the next day, though he was in class the next day. And they said they they went in there. He said, "You've had all the signs of a heart attack, but your heart's your heart's perfect, sir. There's been some kind of miracle happened to you." And so he came back and testified. And I'm not taking credit for that miracle. But I'm telling you, there was a miracle in my class that day. And, and it, but and it came, well, now I would have prayed for the man if that gift of faith, which I discovered later, that's what it was. I didn't know what it was at the time. And uh, I would have prayed for the man if I didn't have that. So that's not the issue. But I, but I, I want you to be aware that there are times and 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 you think about it. The Bible talks about comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Think about any time in your life when that overwhelming confidence took hold of you, and then what were the results? Or maybe you didn't even know what to do and didn't act on it at all. And so we need to cooperate with these gifts. We don't control them. We can, we're available. And when it happens, you need to look for a, a miracle. So what happened? <laughs> you know... After the guy left, all of a sudden, I'm Clark Kent again. <laughs> Man, I, you know, I had all this supernatural power. Now I'm back in. Now I'm back to my normal, you know, thinking and and everything. And it's like, man, oh, I want to be Superman. <laughs> I want to operate in this gift of faith all the time. But you know, you can't you can't switch this on and off. All you got to do is be available to it. And if you're available to it, it'll happen more often. And so, so what's what's happened now is, all right. I went back and I said, all right, Lord, show what was that? What happened? Because it was like when that guy fell over, man. I was like laser focused on getting that man healed. I didn't care. I didn't care what anybody thought. I didn't care if I got kicked out of school trying to raise the guy up. Or, you know, who am I to do that when the instructor was, was, was in class? He could have came and prayed for the guy, but it, it, I didn't care. It was like I was totally riveted and focused, uh, laser focused on getting that man well. And then after, after he left, it was like, it was just like, joop, I was back. I was back to my normal self. And I said, oh, man, I and then I started, God, what did I do? I want to go. I want to go back. What was it that I did? And it, what he it, he told me, he said, nothing that you did, son, is something that I did. And it's and this was a, he said this was a gift of faith. And I said, really? I said I never heard anybody teach on on that like this. I'd, I'd heard Brother Hagen talk a little, a little bit about these things, but um, then I said, well, show me, uh, show me the the gift of faith in the New Testament. And he showed, he took me to two places in the book of Acts. Um, look at look at Acts chapter three, Acts chapter three, and 
where the where the man at uh, the, le, the the lame man was healed in verse three, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on him with John, verse four, Peter said, "Look at us." Now notice this, fixing his eyes on him. So Peter, there was a set focus. He was intently focused on this on this man being well. He had walked by this man uh, a number of days. He came by the the temple. He would, this man was in verse one. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate. So this man had been there every day. Peter and John went up for prayer every day. This, this was, this, you know, they could have prayed for this guy any time, but there was something that happened different this day. And this was what, what the Lord showed me. This was the gift of faith. He, in, This day, Peter was intently focused on this man. There was something, there was a set uh, in his heart. It was like, this man's going to be well today. So much so that he told him, look, get up, rise up. Took him by the hand. And, and and the guy le- leapt and 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 was was healed. And then the same thing in in um, Acts chapter fourteen, in Acts chapter fourteen and verse eight. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him intently. The same thing, guys, observing him intently. And seeing that he had faith to be healed, because so there was a there was a discerning of spirits also operating here, said with a loud voice, "Stand up straight on your feet." And he leapt and walked. This was a working of miracles, but it was the gift of faith that that preceded the working of miracles. Now I'm not saying that a miracle has to have the gift of faith, but I'm telling you, when the gift of faith is in operation, you need to expect a miracle. That man. That day in that classroom had a miracle because he had every sign of a heart attack and, and he came back normal the next day. And the guys, this is, this is a powerful gift. When it comes on you, all doubt goes out. There's an there's a, a overwhelming confidence that comes on you and, and you're going to get focused on somebody who needs a miracle or something that God, something that needs to radically change and you're going to get focused. And when you're focused on that, you can command anything that God speaks to you to command. You need to command it, and it'll happen. The miracle will happen. I'm just releasing confidence in you and faith in you that this gift of faith, it's available for you. And it'll, it will, every time the gift of faith operates, you can expect healings. You can expect miracles. You, you can expect signs and wonders. And this is one of the precious gifts that we have. And, and I, I'd love for you to write me and tell me, how many of you didn't know about this? How many of you have had this operate in your life and you didn't know what to do with it? Just email me, prayer at gregmore.com. I'd love to hear from you and hear how then also I'd love to hear when it does operate through you, the miracles and the healings that happens because Guys, this is one of the gifts that's available to us if we know how it operates. And I've shown you two places in the New Testament, and the results in both cases were a miracle. <laughs> Neither one of these guys could walk. The guy at the beautiful gate, he was asking for alms. He should have been asking for legs. <laughs> oh, I tickled myself. <laughs> Praise God. But he but the bottom line was he got healed. It was a miracle for that guy that he I mean, he hadn't walked in his entire life and he got and he got healed. And it, it was a miracle. And but it was a gift of faith. And and guys, when the gift of faith is an operation, it you are what happens is you become superman or superwoman for a specific period of time for a specific purpose to perform a miracle, to raise somebody from the dead, 
to to call with authority, you know, the will of God, the kingdom of the will of God in somebody's life, the kingdom of God established on earth as it is in heaven. Man, you've got this power. You've got this availability. And now you know what it is. Use it whenever that comes upon you. Thanks for being a part of today's broadcast of Wisdom for Living. Greg's book, Flowing in the Supernatural, offers practical instruction and guidance for operating in the gifts of the Spirit according to their biblical order. In this book, you will discover how to recognize the gifts of the Spirit, exercise spiritual gifts in personal and corporate settings, and unlock the hidden power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Order your copy from gregmore.com today. We've been talking this week about the uh, gifts of the Spirit, uh, the, and specifically today, the gift of faith. And I encourage you to go online, gregmore.com, pick up a copy of my book, Flowing in the Supernatural, where I cover these things in a lot more detail. And by the way, if you order uh, this series, either CD, DVD, USB of this, uh, uh, of this broadcast, uh, living a, li- a supernatural life, I'm going to send this book to you free. Uh, check it out, gregmore.com. Today's teaching, Living a Supernatural Life, is available in a 10-disc CD or DVD album or on a USB flash drive containing both audio and 4K video. Also today, when you order Living a Supernatural Life in either CD, DVD, or USB, Pastor Greg will give you a free copy of his book, Flowing in the Supernatural. In this book, you will discover how to recognize the gifts of the Spirit, exercise spiritual gifts in personal and corporate settings, and unlock the hidden power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Go to gregmore.com and get your free copy today. If you've been blessed by today's teaching, we would like you to consider partnering with Greg Moore Ministries. Your partnership will help expand this broadcast around the world to give people the opportunity to grow in wisdom, Christ-likeness, and grace. Go to gregmore.com and become a partner today. Remember, you can order resources or partner with our ministry at gregmore.com or by writing to the address on your screen. We look forward to hearing from you today. Join us again tomorrow for more Wisdom for Living. You need to understand this, guys, that when people receive healing or a miracle through the gifts of the Spirit, okay, many sometimes it's not even anything to do with faith on their part. It's just the fact that God loves them and in someone like you or me understand the gifts and we operate in them and there's faith in our part that God wants them well, uh, that person that received healing through the gifts of the Spirit, they've got to be, they've got to, uh, be t- led and taught in the Word. That's tomorrow on Wisdom for Living.